for you. Reach out to the sick by doing what? Go and visit them. It's become an act of worship. Iyadatul Marid is known as Hakkul Muslimi ala al-Muslim. It's known as the right of a fellow believer unto you to visit the sick. And if they are your family members, even if they are non-Muslim, even your friends and your business partners, non-Muslim, you can visit them when they are sick. You can pray for their cure. Nothing wrong with that. And you can tell them, may Allah cure you. But the man is a non-Muslim. Subhanallah, that's an act of worship. Do you know that? He will look at you. Wow, this person's prayed for me. Sometimes people say, oh, but he's a non-Muslim. Well, how are you going to touch his life? Who said it's prohibited to pray for someone who's a non-Muslim to be cured from a disease and sickness? If you say, may Allah cure you, the first thing that's included in that is hidayah. It's guidance. Because the biggest disease that anyone could have is the fact that they are misguided. If I am dying of a physical sickness, but I have iman, believe me, it's okay. It's... It's less important, should I say, than if a person does not have iman. In that particular case, khasira dunya wal akhira, the loss of this world and the loss of the next. So this is why reach out to the sick. It's become an act of worship. It is something that is a duty unto you to visit the sick. Today we have technology. We don't even phone those who are related to us who are sick and ill to say, you know what? May Allah cure you, or leave a message on their phone, or send them an email. May Allah forgive us. Technology has made it so easy to reach out to people, but we don't. And sometimes with our own relatives, we have a problem, we make it worse. This person is poisonous. Watch out, watch out, poisonous. It has happened to me. Someone came to me and said, Sheikh, watch out for this man. He's very poisonous. So I said, there can be nobody more poisonous than Abu Jahl. And the Prophet ﷺ reached out to him and prayed for him. And asked Allah to guide him. Okay, he was not guided. That's one thing. But the Prophet ﷺ reached out. Let me tell you, there was a lady who used to throw her mess on the Prophet ﷺ daily. And it didn't come one day. How did he touch her life? Wallahi, there are so many examples. He touched her life in such a way that when it didn't come, he inquired about her health. Just inquiring, hey, perhaps something's wrong here. Let's find out what's going on. What happened? What happened? You tell me what happened. Subhanallah. She was touched to the degree that she had to admit. Wow. Whatever you are doing, that's the right thing. Whatever you've brought, it's correct. I believe. And you are definitely a messenger of Allah. I believe in one Allah. Amazing. Yet, just the day before, she had hatred. Perhaps moments before. So much hatred that she had the guts to do something that the others did not have the guts to do. And she kept on doing it. And he kept on ignoring it. And that's not easy. So this is why when someone intimidates you, if you become intimidated, they have full control over you. Because that means if I want you here, all I need to do is do something that will get you here. Because I know when I do this, this is how you react. Typical reaction. But a Muslim reacts in a spiritual way, in a beautiful heavenly way, in a way that has the consciousness of Allah in it. It is clear, manifest. So touch the lives of people in a beautiful way. MashaAllah.